you know, I had a lot of uh, really interesting remarks that I thought about for weeks after Mark asked me to do this, and I realized today that I'm going to throw them all out at the window and, and go in a different direction here, because it just occurred to me. Someone asked me, they said, you think of yourself as courageous. Have you ever thought of that? And I said, you know, actually, no. So how am I an expert on courageous leadership? I, I, don't, I don't plan around being a courageous leader. I don't plan on making my team courageous. That's just not what we do. I do know what strategic leadership's about. You know, that's really developing, you know, the hindsight, insight, and foresight about your company, about your community, about the markets that you're in, to be able to figure out what kind of direction you need to go reasonably, and getting people to move there. That's leadership. You know, we understand how to set a course and how to get people moving there. But I think if I think, what does, what does the courageous part mean? If anything, it means doing that despite the fact that you will suffer for it every time, and other people will too every time. Every decision has a cost. There's a cost psychologically. There's other costs. I mean, you can think about it. Every product you sell has some blood on it. Every one. I don't care how pure it seems. Everything. There are no perfect decisions. Everything hurts somebody or something. It leaves a footprint, doesn't it? But courage means moving on despite that because, frankly, even sitting still does the same thing. I mean, that's a very painful thing, to sit still and just watch things degrade around you. We're in a constant state of decay. Just like when you get produce in the door, it's dying right then. It's not getting better. And that's us. So we have to constantly inject new things in and constantly re revive and uh, reveal new possibilities. But you can't stay still and moving is going to hurt. And so a leader is going to have to understand that, take that responsibility on and get other people moving despite what may not be in every single individual's interest. You know, maybe someone is just terrible at their job. And you may say, boy, uh, if they lose their job, that's a bad thing. But maybe they're not helping other people. That's a hard decision. But you're not a courageous leader if you let someone sit in a position where there's a bad motivational fit, ever. That's just a reality. So we have to think a little bit differently about how we do things. If we're not engaging, Dave mentioned this about wages. I said, what are we doing as, as co-ops? I mean, how in the world have we fallen behind on that issue? That makes no sense to me. I can tell you what we did. We became the highest entry level uh, comp compensating grocer in America. That's what we did, and we made it work. And we're making money. People say, oh, my God, and this is scary. My board, I mean, my job's on the line for even pushing that. Frankly, the union was like, what? Wait a minute. That's more than what, you know, they were scared. The board, the manager, everyone's like freaking out. But we did it. And now everybody says, oh, yeah, it actually is okay. So we figured out how to make it work. It doesn't mean it was easy. That's a technical challenge, cultural challenge. Uh, sometimes we look at um, what we do with culture. With our board, we had a board that had a reputation, with not of excellence. And so we said, what are we going to do? Now, that meant, for me, saying, let's have an honest discussion. The first thing, I, you know what I did the first week? I, they said, what do we do? I said, I'm glad you asked. Honesty and openness are so important. You love that about co-ops, right? And that's part of why you brought me in, because you know I'm a co-op guy. I said, sure. I said, awesome. Well, here's where I took all the policy and threw them in the garbage. I said, you have to totally redraft this. Everything, this and, I, and I know that people worked really hard on that and cared about it. But there was, there was nothing to be said for, well, maybe we meet in the middle, let's doctor them up. Like, this is much easier to clean house. So we did it. And that was painful. Moving to policy governance, which we know has a better track record. And we are not in a position, we were in a shambles. We were not just taking a bunch of risk in terms of trying out something experimental. So we talk about courageous decision, we, and risk always comes up. It also means knowing when to hold the line, too, despite pressure to do otherwise. Wow, that seems sexier, that's awesome, let's do it. Well, maybe it means doing something that seems a little more uh, basic, rudimentary, but it works. So what, what I, if I had to think about courageous leadership, I always think it means moving where we know we need to go, despite all the other sidetracks and all the difficulties, and you do it anyway, and you're going to suffer for it. I assure you, you're, you're always going to. Um, but you do it anyway. And if you can't, then get out of the leadership role. Let somebody else do it. We don't need people that say, man, I just, I like the status or title, or I'm worried about we don't need that. Let's face it, the competition is way too brutal. Right now, we're going to lose a lot of co-ops, I can tell you. I love co-ops as much as anybody, trust me, this is what I do. I teach at the university, we help start the first graduate certificate program in the United States in co-ops. I'm teaching the first course right now, and I can tell you, people say, well, what are you doing? We, we need education. We're not, well, we did it. That, that, that took probably some kind of leadership because People are saying, will that even work and whatever, and it's crazy, and now it's working, the students like it, and we're going to have another court, and it's fantastic. Um, but you constantly have to do these kind of things, right? You have to challenge the status quo. You have to challenge yourself. So 
I don't know that I'm an expert on courageous leadership, but I do know to forget one's imperative is the commonest form of stupidity. Just straight up. What is it we're here to do? And at, at the end of the day, we can't be all things to all people. That's just not going to work. <laughs> you know, if you try to do that, you're nothing to anybody. I can guarantee that. You don't have the resources, and even if you did, no organization can do that. No organization. So what can we do really well? Can we think in terms of transformative impact versus incremental change? Now, you need to be doing some baseline incremental stuff. Let's improve day to day. Let's really commit. But so you've got to grind. That's the first thing about leadership. You should be seeking out new information all the time. That means reaching out to each other, too, by the way. Right? Because it's wise to learn from your mistakes. I heard that earlier today. Someone said, yeah, learning from your mistakes, that's courageous leadership. If you're really a courageous leader, you learn from the mistakes of others. You call other people and says, well, we're, we're a special snowflake. We're different. We're like a unicorn that rides a rainbow. You know, no, I mean, come on. We have such a, a depth of experience among us that we don't have to be the royal taster every time we sit down to a meal. Okay? Somebody's already done that. Maybe if they survive, great, then we'll eat too. If not, well, too bad for them, but I'm going to learn. Trust me. Okay? So that's, that's part of courage, too, is constantly working to improve. You have to embrace the grind. You have to put that on your team. You say, man, they work so hard. Yeah, they do. And guess what? Dave's right about productivity. We're going to have to work even harder, and we're going to have to work smarter and harder because otherwise we're not going to survive and we're going to be nothing to anybody. So I guess that's really the choice, right? When you think about foresight, think like you're in back to the future. And don't just think we've got to figure out the answer. Figure out a lot of answers, alternate timelines. There's maybe 20 different things we're thinking, 30 different scenarios. And pick the best one. You know, pick the one that makes the most sense. But uh, it's not about having the answer, really. It's just about getting motion, because as soon as you have the answer, the question will change. That's the nature of things. 3D printing's coming on. Amazon, I see three towers coming up just down the block. They're in our neighborhood. All that stuff's right there. It's right in our face. You see uh, all these other players coming in. We don't just compete with groceries, by the way. Restaurants, food carts, farmer's markets, you name it. We love a lot of those folks, but the fact is we compete for food dollars. So let's get over the whole thing about, man, Whole Foods, you know what? That's the least of your worries. Conventional's a big deal. The other players are a big deal. But the whole nature of how people procure food for themselves is changing. And the millennials do not eat the way that the baby boomers who built this movement did. They don't. So that brings me to another piece of courageous leadership I'm going to touch on. Because, again, I'm just, I just threw out what I was going to talk about, and I'm just telling you what I'm thinking here. A couple of things. One is path dependency. We need to take whatever we're doing and just lose all loyalty to it, except for the core values of your co-op. Anything you're doing, how it's manifesting, should be subject to be scrapped. Everything. I don't care how fundamental it seems. Because the reality is, what we did in 1972 does not matter anymore, really, all that much. This is not the people from 1972, and they're changing even more, right? I mean, let's think about it. Think about race, think about class, think about just the geographical realities of what we're dealing with, the demographic psyche. What we've been doing is not necessarily going to appeal to everyone. And the fact is, how they buy things is different. Are we all going to just say, well, let's just keep building 20th century grocery stores and expect that to win in the 21st century? That's why you'll know it if you look at our website. It says 21st century, or call it for the 21st century, because that's what we're trying to do. That's why we went, and, and I tell you, you don't have to love this. You can say, you guys are nuts, and that's foolish, and that's fine. We're going to do it anyway, because we know what our community wants. Okay, so we went ahead and said, we're going to do a solidarity call, because that suits who we are and what our values are. Okay? So we're half worker, half consumer. People are like, oh my God, but workers on the board. And, this, and guess what? Our board meetings are fantastic. These workers on the board are articulate. They're insightful. A lot of it comes down to, do you develop a culture? Okay. Do you develop a strategy? Because you see that little thing back there. It says, uh, it's a, that's somebody's rendition. I know it's such a lifelike thing. You picked it up. But that's something I said uh, for a long time. My team is, it's true what Drucker said. P, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. But you should make it the breakfast of champions because just a culture with no strategy, that's going to be a big mess anyway. You need both. You need both. Um, and for us, a culture is embracing wherever it takes us, no matter how crazy it sounds. If the empirical uh, data backs it up, if our values back it up, we're going to go with it. And, it's, and we're going to suffer. And a lot of you are going to say, you guys are crazy. I will tell you that's the other thing about this that where courage comes in. It's not taking on a big challenge. You could sit at home and say, man, i got this cool little puzzle. I'm going to solve it. Nobody's around. And you're just rocking it out. And as soon as you've got a bunch of people watching you, hey, it's all, uh, you know, uh, it's much different. And that's the thing about these leadership positions. The leadership implies other people. So you're getting judged and dissected all the time. The biggest thing is, is figuring out how to navigate that. For me, it's the fact that it's always the right thing to do the right thing. So I really don't care what the consequences are because there's always going to be consequences. 
People will judge you if stuff doesn't work, too. If you just sit still, they'll judge that, too. There's no escape in that. When you step into leadership, that's part of what you sign up for. And that's where the biggest piece of courage comes in, is not necessarily trying to please, but being authentic and really contributing. I might say, well, it sounds really good to say this. You know, I might, I might say that um, you know, different folks can do things different ways. There's some structures out there, I will tell you, in food courts that just don't work. I can just tell you, they do not work given the scale, scope, and context of the business. But no one says anything. It's like, well, that's their, well, maybe we should. We're all in this together. We're a movement. And frankly, the only way we can actually survive is together. I even heard about a co-op saying, man, we're debating whether to stay in NCG. It could be the most ignorant thing I've ever heard. That's, I know that they may not, they say, they, they say we may leave NCG. And I'm thinking, strategically, this is so foolish. Anyway, I'm not there to say anything about it. I'm just saying the truth is, sometimes we have to, if you care about people, you tell them the truth. If you don't care about people, you don't tell them the truth. That's another thing about courage. Courage also comes back to love. Do you love yourself? Do you love other people? If you do, you're authentic, you stay the course, you tell the truth, and you, whatever happens, happens, you deal with it. So there you are.